Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all, I'm so glad you are here with us today on Youth Sunday, and uh, the youth will be leading the service. Uh, my name is Pastor T. West Moore. I'm the interim minister here at Weston Presbyterian Church. Several announcements. Uh, please do not forget to sign in the friendship pads located in the center aisle, and please pass them down your pew and get to know those you may not be familiar with. Uh, we do want to extend uh, prayers of Christian sympathy to Dale Shepard and the family of his father's uh, death, Reverend Dr. Bob D. Shepard. Um, let's see, a senior, day, uh, senior adult uh, field trip is planned for May 24th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and that will be at the North Carolina Museum of Art. Um, we have uh, several more announcements uh, to share, uh, but I need to first ask uh, Mr. Frank Hayes to come up here and share a word or five about some things coming up. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> so after 20 years or so, I'm going to give up the rice run. I've had a lot of good, very interesting experiences, mainly prior to COVID. Because it used to be on Monday, or when I got there, leftover Panera <laughs> uh, treats. And I used to, when I had that, I had a couple of friends that used to go with me. Follinsby is one of them. She's here today, I think, her husband, anyhow. <laughs> and so he would always go and not supposed to eat any of that, but he did. So we had a lot of fun, a lot of little things like that. But after 20 years, it's time. And it used to be I went every, almost every week. Now I went down to every, every little week and then the third week and I gotta make this shorter, I'm sorry. And so then <laughs> next thing I know, I do it once a month. Last week I took 70 bags. You guys have done a good job bringing in over the years. And that's all the good news. The bad news is all the traveling back and forth for 20 years, the church owes me $400. <laughs> so I'm gonna give up on the garden too. But thank God, they got a couple of people here. Harrison was behind me, uh, and, and I don't see Armin, but he, they all chip in. Whenever I'm in trouble, they come in. And Roger Irwin is another one. They are one by one doing a lot of help. And, um, and it's very nice that most of the people go by, Shannon include, hey, the garden looks good or the garden looks good. And so that's gratifying. But the same token, a lot of dirt put in there, a lot of potting soil, a lot of plants, a lot of fertilizer, a lot of time. And so the bad news is it's going to cost you $4. <laughs> no kidding, I should pay. I should pay the church. It's, oh, by the way, the last couple of years, my dear wife, Lucia Hayes, she goes with me. So she's part of the rice program. Anyhow, it's been my pleasure. And really, if it should be the other way around, I should reverse it. It gave me something to do, something I feel like I was accomplished in, and I did it with. <clears throat> You've heard we'll we'll be needing some assistance uh, in 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 the months ahead. Um, I've got what you need an announcement to. Oh yes, his garden. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. A um, couple of other things. So after worship, um, we will gather in the Crawford Center for food, uh, and we there there's. You will be instructed on how to sit when you get in there, um, but also we'll pray when we're in there because obviously when I pray in here, it messes things up. So um, we will make sure that it is done decently and in order. 
Um, but we're so excited the youth are leading today. One more word I need to share. So on Wednesday, May 3rd, I shared with the session that I am resigning. My last Sunday in the pulpit will be June 4th. And then I'll be on a vacation for, for four weeks. My effective end date will be Sunday, July 2nd. But my last Sunday in the pulpit is Sunday, July 4th. Uh, but the pastor nominating committee has a report to share with you. So the session has called a congregational meeting for Sunday, May 21st after worship uh, to hear their report. So y'all, we've got a few weeks left and I'm excited that I get to spend today uh, with uh, the youth leading. Um, so let us prepare our hearts and minds as we worship the Lord.
Please join me in the call to worship. For the beauty of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. We come to you today, Lord, to offer our thanks for all you do. Let us confess together. Loving God, thank you for loving us even when we make mistakes. Thank you for what you have done for us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for your love and forgiving our sins, even when we don't realize our sins. Please show us how to love others as you do. Amen.
If the children would join us up front for the children's moment. See how I shared with her? That's a form of love, just like how Jesus shows love to us every day. This week, let's try to show love to others by holding a towel or crayon. Let us engage with the group. Let's do this. Small acts of kindness like these are what makes the world united. Let's close in prayer. We'll do a repeat on from May prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And help us love others. And help us love others. Amen. Dear God, give us the strength today to listen to and accept your word. For you and the Holy Spirit know our hearts. Let us be open-minded. Lord, lead our hearts to love and accept others for what they believe, their skin color, whom they love, and how they want to live their lives. For whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. We ask you to help us listen to the youth, for they are the future. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God, the word of God for the people of God. took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. I couldn't earn it, and I 
and I don't deserve it, but still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God, yeah. <coughs> when I was your foe, still you been so, so good to me. And when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Till I'm found leaves in 99. I couldn't earn it and I don't deserve it, but still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me there's no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, but still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. Our second, our second scripture this morning is first found in John chapter 4, verses 9 through 21. Listen to God's word. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate a brother or sister are liars. For those who have not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Hi, my name is Charlotte Beamgard, and I'm a senior at Pinecrest High School. First John 4, 19 through 20, we loved because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Recently, I've learned about gaining perspective. Through school and the cross, I've had my fair share of what you would call difficult people. <laughs> sometimes it's someone who has done something wrong to me. Sometimes it's someone who has done something wrong to my family or my friends. Sometimes I'm the one that messes up and hurts others. As a protective person over those closest to me, it's easy to let anger and hate take control. Perspective on others and why they do what they do has opened my heart up to those who have let anger take over. I have to realize, and you have to realize, that people aren't perfect. And they mess up because we know this. this Sorry, because we know this, it can become easier to see things from others' perspectives and forgive. Putting myself in others' shoes allows me to have more patience and grace with everyone, even people I don't agree with. Hatred is easy. It's so easy to turn to hate or anger, but to be stronger and to be closer to God, I've had to learn how to be compassionate and forgiving towards everyone. What's so amazing about this is that we are all a part of this big, beautiful, and messy family. All of us must learn how to not lose ourselves to the hate and grow stronger with God and his love because he loves all of us. We are his family, so we are each other's family. And the thing about family is that you look out for one another. Even when it's hard for you or you don't really know what to do, it's a difficult and lifelong process of pushing the hate away and letting compassion and love in. When you look at the bigger picture or gain perspective, it becomes easier. And again, someone might make you mad or upset, but you have to take a step back and think to yourself about who they are and what they might be going through. We have to be forgiving and we have to be patient because without these skills, we aren't much of a family. Because we are in God's family, we must take all of these lessons we can from our ever-loving Father when trying to forgive. He forgives because he loves, so we must forgive so that we can love. Next, we are going to hear a recording from Camden Lewis, who wanted to be here today, but she sadly couldn't make it. And that will start right now. He never gives up on us. 
His commitment is unwavering. Two, love with kindness. This is my favorite, maybe because this one is easier for me. Kindness is all about caring. It's kindness that draws us to one another, making it possible to share the love of Jesus, because he first loved us by pouring out his blood on us. Three, love unselfishly. This is simply about everyone but you. This aspect of affection is critical, and it seeks what is best for the other person. No strings attached, display love, asking of nothing in return. Four, love with forgiveness. This one is complicated. We must practice forgiveness in order to forgive on a regular basis. If you have heard, I forgive, but I will never forget, well, you are reminded of that pain when you see or think of that person, then God still has some work to do in your heart. We have to try and overcome the effects of what they have done to us, and it is a work in progress. When we get there, we are truly loving others the way God loves us. Five, love your enemies. It's so easy to love people who love us back, but what about those who choose not to love us? This is what God does all day, every day. Our sins make us enemies of God, and he still doesn't let that get in the way of love. He first loved us when we were in our worst condition. Love is a great challenge. If we are going to love the way he first loved us, we are going to need some help. The good news is we have God, the Holy Spirit. God has given us the capacity to love just as he first loved us. He will do the work. All we have to do is open up and allow him. Thank you. Hello, my name is Claire High and I'm a senior at Pinecrest High School. Today I'm going to be talking about 1 John 4 verses 19 through 21. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. To me, this means that we need to love everyone and have compassion for all. To me, it also means opening yourself up to everyone and trying your best to be compassionate and caring towards them, even if they are not caring or compassionate towards you. Loving others also comes with its benefits. As you can gain newfound trust in people and become stronger mentally with someone who can back you up when things get hard. Over the past six years I've been at this church, I found the most positive, caring, and supportive group of friends and mentors that will last a lifetime. I'm thankful for all the love and support over the years. As stated in 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. So I end today with a reminder to always love and be passionate towards others as you would towards God. Please join me in saying what we believe together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
may be seated. All right. Please join me in prayer. Go ahead and bow your heads, please. Lord, I just want to thank you, firstly, for bringing all these people here today. And thank you for constantly loving each and every one of us, oh God. And we pray that you show your love to those that need it in this time, Lord. And please help us to love everyone as you love us, individually and as a whole. And we pray for those that were involved in the incident that took place last Friday at Pinecrest. And for their families, we ask that you show your love and provide your healing to each and every person involved and for the families and for the friends. Lord, we ask that you forgive us and redeem us as your children, even when we stray far from your side, knowingly or unknowingly. Almighty God, please shine your light on us at all times and never, ever turn away from us in shame. We thank you, Father, for the sacrifice that Christ has made for us to represent your everlasting love for your people. O oh God, we ask that you hear every name, concern, or longing that we have to lift unto you now, both aloud or in silence. Heavenly Father, we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We love because God first loved us. Out of this love, let us give generously.
please join us in the prayer of dedication. Loving God, bless these cheerful gifts. Use them that they shall be a sign of your love to others. Amen. Go with us as we leave and help us show that love to others. 